aircrete versus conventional construction. You know, there's a lot of hype, a lot of questions, a lot of misinformation, a lot of incomplete information out there about aircrete. I mean, how does it really and actually compare to conventional construction? Well, first of all, let's start with, uh, you know, construction methods. Um, with a conventional uh, stick box frame or f framed house, uh, you know, you're going to be using dimensional lumber and nailing it together or screwing it together. Um, you know, typically you're going to build your walls, raise them up, uh, apply a siding, insert insulation, and put on a, uh, a paneling on the inside. You're going to uh, put a roof on it. Uh, you're going to blow or lay insulation in the attic. And, uh, of course, all, you, know, have, you have your electrical and your plumbing to install. Um, and so uh, it's not uh, a hard thing to learn. And there's a lot of labor out there that already knows how to work with conventional construction. So it has some advantages. Um, whereas with aircrete, uh, in this case, we're going to talk specifically about a dome. Uh, a dome requires you to mix aircrete pour it into a mold. Uh, you're going to potentially have to cut some blocks and then move the blocks to location and mortar them into position. Um, you know, each construction has its own strengths and weaknesses and uh, points of extra labor and extra difficulty. Um, I, I believe that uh, conventional construction is probably faster than building an aircrete dome. And, um, an aircrete dome is also, um, you know, it's a little more difficult to hire just off the street labor. Uh, uh, of course, if you know what you're doing, you can oversee it and instruct it. It's easy to teach, easy to learn. So certainly you could have unskilled labor trained and up and running and building with aircrete uh, pretty quickly. Um, let's talk about the cost. The cost of... Let's face it. Having an alternative building constructed for you can cost more than conventional construction, up to $250 per square feet. Building a 450 square foot house can cost as much as $90,000 to have a company build. Build it yourself and save $80,000. Do you want to build alternative homes for others as a professional? You could profit up to $70,000. The material of the building is immaterial slapping mud on a wall, ramming earth, stuffing a bag with dirt, or aircrete. These skills can be learned in a day or two. The real skill begins when you are ready to make your tiny house functional. Electric, solar, air conditioning, plumbing, flooring, or alternative waste water management. This is where many people fail to finish their homes or pay large sums of money to hire skilled labor. Others fail in the planning or logistic stages. They buy the wrong land, underestimate cost, do not know how to hire and manage unskilled labor, or fail to connect infrastructure. This is why we now offer the Terlingua Alternative Building School. Beginner or experienced builder, come learn how to build a tiny house from scratch. In far less time and expense than traditional paths of learning, you can learn and experience every skill you need. Now you can proceed with confidence to build the house and life of your dreams. Let's talk about the cost. The cost of aircrete versus conventional framing. So what you see here is we have two spreadsheets. Uh, each of these are set up for a 450 square foot structure. Uh, actually, the dome is 452 square feet uh, or a conventional cabin that's 16 by 28. Um, we've included in both these, you know, your basic uh, two sinks, shower, toilet, refrigerator, washer, dryer, uh, you know, everything that you need uh, to move in and make this, uh, you know, a typical one bedroom small house. So as you see here uh, with conventional construction, it comes out to about $37.53 a square foot uh, with tax and everything. And the aircrete comes out to a total with tax of about $28.58 a square foot. So there's nine or ten dollars per square foot difference in the construction between the two. So it's not substantially cheaper over conventional construction. Now, what are the other advantages or disadvantages? Uh, with conventional construction, you know, you have the potential for rodents and pests to get into your insulation and have a bunch of urine field insulation. 
uh, molds and mildews, lots of off-gassing, unhealthy problems, um, not to mention, you know, ongoing maintenance, replacing the roof occasionally, uh, and, you know, in a, in a lifetime, potentially uh, having to more or less just almost rebuild the entire structure to keep it in good shape and livable. Uh, Aircrete, on the other hand, is something that should be a multi-generational house. Uh, maybe it needs a coat of paint once in a while. Aircrete can be fireproof or very fire resistant. Uh, if you live in dry areas, that can be particularly important. And the roof is definitely not going to deteriorate uh, and go away. Um, it's um, it's more or less it's more sound resistant in a lot of ways. Uh, it's storm resistant if you build it in a round shape, whether that's a cylinder or a dome. Uh, it can easily withstand F5 tornadoes uh, and even hurricanes uh, when you're strictly talking about the wind speed. Um, now, whether they stand up to flying cars, cows, and trees, now, you know, that's a, a subject to be debated uh, somewhere else. Um, but they're storm resistant, uh, they're pest resistant, they're mold resistant. Um, you know, even if it got flooded, it, the walls are not going to rot and need to be taken apart or have the whole house torn down. You're not going to have the mold problems. Um, and also, the aircrete is non-toxic. It's not going to be off-gassing a great deal of toxins into your house unless, of course, uh, you put a bunch of particle board uh, furniture uh, and cabinets in. Another advantage to aircrete is that, you know, it can be shaped, uh, carved, stained to look like rock, brick, stone, uh, wood, uh, just about anything that you would like it to look like. So it has a, a better... Uh, it lends itself more to an artistic flair. Now, efficiency-wise, uh, Aircrete is actually about uh, six and a quarter percent less efficient insulation-wise than a conventional home. So you're going to want to make your walls thicker. Uh, in this example, um, the structures are for a two by six uh, wall or a five and a half inch uh, Aircrete wall thickness, which means this aircrete structure would actually be a little less energy efficient and therefore cost more to operate and own over time. But if you adjust that, uh, that thickness and you add an inch to it and you compensate, it doesn't really change the price much. And so it's very easy to move it up to a cost that, uh, uh, that is negligible for the same energy efficiency as a typical home. Now, if you wanted to make it more efficient and move up to an eight inch wall, uh, you see now we're closed, we've closed the gap of a couple of dollars to create a more insulated, more efficient structure than a conventional cabin. And of course, you know, in conventional construction, I can't say, well, you know, I want a seven inch stud or an eight inch stud. I've either got to go up to a 12 inch stud, uh, which isn't even 12 inches. I'm sorry. They also have a 10 inch. Um, or I have to build truss walls, uh, which could actually be very efficient, but substantially more expensive. Um, so there is some advantage in efficiency in aircrete when you begin to choose various sizes. Uh, if you went up to a 12 inch wall here, uh, you're still cheaper than the conventional frame uh, house. So it does become more efficient uh, as you move up through the thicknesses. Um, yeah, see, look at this. We moved all the way up to a 16-inch wall, which is a substantial amount of insulation, uh, and the price is just approaching the same as conventional construction. So, you know, if you bring the cost up to equal, then the efficiency is substantially more. Uh, and, of course, you have to consider, like, you know, for example, in this chart, um, there's not a direct linear relationship between the thickness of a wall uh, and its uh, ability to insulate you from the movement of heat in or out of your structure. Uh, it's actually on a curve, so there is a point of diminishing returns. But, you know, this gives you a good idea, uh, a better sense of reality of what it actually would cost you, uh, what the efficiencies are, uh, what's the advantages of aircrete uh, versus conventional construction. Uh, it makes it a little more real uh, and helps you make better decisions. And of course, uh, no discussion would be complete without the fact that conventional construction can be permitted with no effort. Uh, 
Aircrete, it can be permitted, but you've got to have an iron wheel. You've got to have an engineer usually, uh, and you've got to really stick to your guns and never take no for an answer. Uh, or do a hybrid of conventional construction where you have a, a pole structure that holds the roof up and the air creates simply infill. Uh, those can actually be, be uh, permitted fairly easily. Um, or you've got to live in a place where inspection is not required, or you've got to find the loopholes, such as living in structures under 400 square feet. And so um, all very useful information. I think this will help bring it home for a lot of you to really be able to help better grasp aircrete versus your conventional home. Now, I'm going to remind everybody we have the Trilingua uh, aircrete rapid cast workshop where we're going to build a cabin from ground to finished, ready to move into in just 14 days. It's a small 16 foot cabin. Uh, it's going to come in at about $28 per square foot finished. And, um, you know, the advantage to a workshop, of course, is you get hands on skills. And, you know, if we're speaking honestly here, the skill difference between building with dimensional lumber versus learning aircrete versus ramming tires uh, in an earth ship or ramming earth for regular rammed earth or building a straw bell house, wattle and daub or cob. Um, honestly, that's a pretty minute part of the job. Um, obviously, uh, there's other advantages, and we're going to be releasing some more videos discussing how Air Creek compares with other structures. But consider taking the workshop, you know, because these are skills that transition and translate to every type of construction. It's a very minor difference when it comes to the external structure. Of the, it's the internal part that gives you some of the highest expense. Once you've got your structure up, rather, regardless of its material, the major skills, the most expensive skills come into finishing your structure on the interior and all of the suit of skills that go along with that. So if not with us, then with somebody, I recommend you uh, take some alternative path of learning in a hands-on manner. Uh, a lot of times people fail at jobs because they can't manage the logistics. They don't plan ahead. They get the order of the job out of step. And then you wind up having the demolition part of the job, and that drives up expense uh, and frustration. And uh, these are all skills that you can learn in an, an alternative building school. So if this kind of thing resonates with you, if it interests you, then certainly click the link below in the description and find out more.